greenside bunker shots, there's no doubt that these shots cause a huge number of problems for a lot of players. And I believe that a lot of those problems stem from a poor understanding of what's required to play this shot well. We look at golf on television, the tour players make these shots look so easy and, and obviously they practice them a, a huge number of hours. However, these shots, I think, frighten players more than any other. And so we're going to talk over a couple of videos here about some of the key elements that you need to apply to your game in order to take the fear away from this shot first of all and secondly start to execute the shots more consistently. So we're going to start with an understanding of what we're trying to achieve and the first thing that we can say is that this is perhaps the only shot in golf where we're never trying to actually make contact with the golf ball. We're intentionally trying to avoid contact with the ball and instead create a divot of sand, move a divot of sand that produces the flight on the ball for us. So your golf ball in effect is going to be blasted out on a wave or a cushion of the sand that you move. And how you set yourself up and how you mentally prepare yourself for this shot is critical in terms of your ability to execute the shot well. So I'm going to start with a statement that may surprise a lot of you. In my opinion, bunker shots are perhaps one of the easiest shots in the game and the reason for that is that we have margin for error so we have a situation where with the correct technique I can enter the sand anywhere from perhaps half an inch to two even three inches behind the ball and with the correct technique and the correct use of the club the ball will come out of the bunker so this for me is perhaps the only shot where we really have a huge margin for error. You, you don't have that margin for error when we play the ball from the grass. You've got to hit the ball perfectly or you hit the ball very fat or very thin and the, the shot uh, as a consequence is generally not what you want. Out here in the bunker we've got a little margin for error. So a couple of key points to understand. Now first of all we must have the correct piece of equipment in our hands. We must use the wedge correctly as a result. So. Why is a wedge important? Well, your sand iron or your most lofted wedge is critical, A, because we need to produce elevation to potentially clear the lip of the bunker. But much more important than that, something that many players are not aware of, and that's what's called the bounce of the club, how the, the sole of the club is going to interact with the sand. So what you need to do is you need to find your bunker wedge, you need to take a stick or another club, use the club shaft, and we need to set the club up nice and vertical and have a look when we set the club down at what would be the floor and ensure that the leading edge of the club is sticking up in the air. So there is a gap between the trailing edge, the back of the wedge, and the leading edge which is higher from the ground. Now this effect is called the bounce of the club and what this allows you to do is to strike down into the sand and avoid the club digging straight down to the bottom of the bunker. This bounce, this trailing edge being lower than the leading edge, allows the club to rebound off the sand and means you can get the, the club through the sand and out the other side of the divot. Now, perhaps the most common problem in bunker shots is number one, a lack of understanding of how we're going to use the bounce, and number two, a setup which takes immediately, takes all that bounce away and gives us no opportunity to use it through the strike. So we're going to look at a couple of things in your setup here that I believe are really important. So, first of all, I've discussed bunker shots in a previous video and we've talked about ball position. We're looking to enter the sand before we strike the ball and because of that, we must have the ball forwards in our stance. So I would like to see the golf ball on a line inside the edge of your left heel there. You can see that my foot's flared out a little, that allows me to show my ankle to the ball, but it also, when we get to swing in the club, makes it a little easier to turn through. I'm not a great fan of very square feet positions in bunker shots. So we get that lead foot turned out a little bit, and we're effectively showing our ankle bone to the ball there. And as we take our stance, I now have the ball forwards in my stance. This straight away makes it much easier for me to strike the sand behind the ball. The second element relates again to this bounce. So one of the elements that really destroys good, good bunker play is the shaft position at address. If 
as we do for a full shot, I get that club shaft leaning forwards too far. I take away the bounce of the club. I'm tipping the shaft forwards, which brings the leading edge much lower to the floor and encourages a swing where the leading edge enters the sand first and digs straight down to the bottom of the bunker. We get no momentum on the sand and it's almost impossible for us to clear the lip with the ball. So those two elements are critical, forward ball position and a shaft position which is much more vertical. That allows us to maintain the bounce of the club. Now I'm sure you've heard about people talking about the idea of opening the club face and this can be important in bunker shots although not necessarily crucial. A small opening of the club face will increase the bounce. That's the effect it has. It lowers the trailing edge to the floor and increases the bounce. So in very soft or deep sand, an increase of bounce is very useful, so slightly open club face. However, again, this is something that I tend to see people overdo. They get the club face way too open, and now they're not able to create any forwards momentum on the sand. They're not able to project the sand out of the bunker, and as a consequence, the golf ball doesn't go very far either. So, a slight opening of the club face, a forward ball position, and a shaft position which is much more straight up, much more vertical rather than lent forwards. Those would be key components in the setup for a bunker shot. Okay, so having understood the setup, particularly from this face on view, you're now in a position where we can start to look at the mechanics, the technique of the swing. Work at your setup first, understand and check your wedge, make sure you've got enough bounce on the club and by bounce, most wedges would have that indicated on them. Uh, for most of you, I would recommend a minimum of 10 degrees of bounce. Uh, I know that there are some manufacturers who produce wedges with less than that and I would certainly avoid using 60 degree lob wedges for bunker shots because they have very little bounce on them. They're great for playing from the turf or from tight lies and creating loft, but very poor at getting through the bunker, getting through the sand. So looking at uh, the correct bounce, maintaining that bounce in your setup. In the next video, we're going to talk a lot more about the technique and show you how you can use that setup to improve your bunker play.